Hello everyone and welcome back. In this lesson, before going any further and exploring the API of Angular Signals, we're going to talk about an important pitfall that you should be aware of from the beginning when using signals in combination with values that are not primitive types. So we have here a couple of examples of two signals. One uses an object as a value and the other uses an array. So now let's learn about an important pitfall to avoid when using this type of signals. Let's try to, for example, mutate the data here inside this course signal and also here inside the courses signal. Before doing that, in order for us to be able to understand what is going on, let's quickly print out here to the console some value related to each of the signals. So let's print out the course title from the course signal that contains an object. So let me call here the signal. It's this one. So we're going to invoke it and we're going to access the course title. And now let's grab here our signal that contains an array value. And let's also print out here some relevant value to the console. Let's in this case, print out the whole array. Let's use join and let's pass in here as the separator comma. Now let's go ahead and let's reload our interface. And as we can see, we have here the values being printed out. So the title of the course corresponds here to the title property of this object here. And we have here the content of this array printed out to the console as well. Now we have here this button, the increment button that is going to mutate here the counter. Let's reuse this same method here and change also here the values of these two signals. Now, if you didn't know how to use uh, signals properly and how to mutate their values, you could be tempted to do something like this. You could be tempted to access here, for example, the course signal, invoke it, get access to its inner value, and then just change it directly as a property. All right. So if we try this and we hit here increment, we can see that indeed the value of the signal has been changed. And the same thing here for the array. So let's go ahead and let's access here the value of the courses array. And let's go ahead and let's push here a new value here to the course. Let's say, for example, that we push the value, for example, the title of this course, Angular Core Deep Dive. All right. Now let's try this out. If I refresh here our interface and I click on increment, we can see that indeed the value is getting appended each time. Now, despite the fact that this seems to work correctly, this is not the right way to do it. So here, what we are doing is we are accessing the value of each signal and we are mutating its value directly. This is a mistake. When we do this, we bypass the whole signal reactivity mechanism. So when we mutate a property in a signal directly, there is no way for Angular to know that the value has been mutated. So in this particular case, this example only works because I am still using here default change detection. If we would be doing change detection based on the values of the signals only inside this component or in our whole application, this code here would not work anymore. So this is an important pitfall to be aware of and avoid. You should not mutate the values of signals directly by accessing the values and mutating object properties or mutating an array in place without creating a new array. This defeats the whole purpose of signals. This way, there is no way for each of the signals to notify any consumers that are interested in that the value has changed. It just defeats the whole purpose of signals. So the correct way to do this, as you can imagine, is to use here either the update or the set examples. So in a particular case, of the course signal, we could do something like, for example, we could do a set here and we could set here a new value. Let's say that the ID would be one and the title would be hello world, just to make the same 
change in the values of the data, but this time around in a correct way. So this is still working exactly as before, but the big difference is that now the core signal is going to be able to inform any interested consumers that a new value is available. And that's the whole point of signals. The same thing would apply here. We can do here a set, for example, and we can actually, in this case, do an update, all right? And we need to remove here this parenthesis so we are not getting the value of the signal. Instead, we are using here the update API. And let's go ahead and let's grab here the courses array, all right? And now we are going to go ahead and we're going to return here a value, which is a copy of the array plus the new course that we have added, which was the Angular core deep dive course all right so now again if we try this out it's still working exactly the same way as before but this time around this course signal is going to be able to inform any consumers that its internal data has changed so something to be aware of from the beginning as you start to learn and use more and more the signals api don't mutate the value of signals directly. Very important. And with this, let's now continue exploring the Angular Signals API.